And I'm telling you now, I'm going to tell you stuff today that's going to lift your spirits and build faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I'm going to share with you today from the Bible the plan that God has for your family. It is from Genesis to Revelation. It was, it was, it's God's value system. Let me explain. Oil means nothing to God. Diamonds and gold are a commodity as, as easy for him to make and create and get as dust. The thing that God valued was family. And when God wanted to redeem mankind from sin, he didn't buy us with gold. Because if he could, then someone else could come along and say, well, I've got more gold, I'm going to buy them back. It would appear today that the devil has most of the gold. The world will spend a billion dollars. I, was, I, was, I saw something yesterday that Michael Jackson's three kids um, were left a billion dollars by their father. A billion dollars by Michael Jackson. So the world's got the money. So how does God buy us? How does God purchase or redeem us? Redeeming... Uh, 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 redeeming is when you put something in the pawn shop and it's held in limbo in the, pa the pawn shop. And if you don't come back for it, they're going to sell it. But there's a season that you can go back and you can redeem it. You can take, take the money and say, this is my, here's my receipt. I want this back. And you can redeem it out of the pawn shop. And we've been redeemed. We were taken away from the original source. We were taken into the devil's pawn shop. And God didn't come to the pawn shop with gold or, or diamonds or whatever, or, or dollar bills. Because then we could be bought. Someone else could buy us. So the value system of heaven, the thing that motivates the heart of God through the love that he had for his fallen creation, how could he redeem us? out of the devil's pawn shop. He used the commodity that no one else had. He used the means that no, can, no person can counterfeit. Nothing can take the place of what, the currency he used. He used the blood of Jesus. He took the sacrifice of his own son, and he said to the pawn shop owner, the devil, look, here you are. I'm buying the lot back. I'm paying the price for everybody. And there's no way you can take them back. In fact, worse than that, by the blood of Jesus and the open display that he made on the cross, he not only redeemed us, but he gave us a name that is above every name, no name like the name of Jesus, that if we use the name, when you employ the name of Jesus, it's not just you saying, it's, it's, it's not a twopenny prayer that you're praying. When you talk about Jesus, when you mention the blood of Jesus, you put the devil into an absolute epileptic fit because it's the one thing, if you want to argue with the devil, Jesus was on a fast. And the devil appeared to Jesus and said, Hey, cast yourself down off this building. And I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. What did Jesus say? He didn't argue. He just said, It is written. By the power of the blood, the power of the word, every time you talk about Jesus, you are not just saying a name like you're saying Jose or you're saying to Peter or whatever. Whenever you mention the name of Jesus and you are referring to God's son, you are telling the devil and reminding him. You are dragging him back to Calvary. You are taking him back to that cross. And you are saying to him, remember this? Do you remember this? And he remembers, my God, does he remember that was the point when Jesus, the Bible said, made an open display. He, he just took everything out in the open. 
and he made an open display of principalities and powers and he conquered the devil. He conquered hell. And when he died on that cross, if you remember the thief, one thief said, get us off the cross. The other th thief said, look, we, 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 deserve, we, we deserve to be hanging here, but he has done nothing. And Jesus turns in his, lie, his dying moments. He turns to the man and says, this day, this day, listen. Let me let me let me, let me read it to you. Where's that uh, the scripture? At, um, uh, Andrew, what scripture reference is that though? It's Luke twenty three, thirty nine. I, I get in a screen to help me with my eyes. One of the male factors, verse thirty nine says, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, "If thou be the Christ, save yourself and us." But the other answering rebuked him, saying, "Dost thou not fear God, seeing that thou art in the same com condemnation?" And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, here we are. He's calling, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto thee, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Now let me tell you the, the crazy implications of those few verses. I will always taught by every preacher I ever heard that Jesus went to hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the devil. And I thought, apart from the Emmaus Road, and appealing to the disciples, Thomas, th those things, I, I thought that he had gone down to hell and had a great big battle and war with the devil and finally you know, staggered out with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. I want you to understand this, and this is why it's important. This is the premise of what you would understand. When, when, when Jesus died and the thief died on the cross, Jesus took this thief to paradise, to heaven with him. Now listen, this will blow your mind. There had never been a redeemed soul in heaven before. This was a brand new species of people. No one had been there by grace. Everyone had been put there by the, the Jewish covenant and suddenly the gates of heaven open the angels are absolutely insane they have watched the diadem of heaven be crucified like a, a, a beast like a, a slaughtered like a pig i mean oh it's the crown of thorns and the the lashing on his back by itself should have killed him and they watch him dying. I can imagine them frantic, looking over the battlements of heaven, saying to the Father, what are you doing? What are you doing? God has a plan. Before he died, God knew he would raise him again. And I got news for you in your circumstance. And I know in your circumstance that the waves are always higher and the wind is always stronger and the fear is always greater and the panic that the devil can put inside your belly that freezes you and makes you literally filled with terror that you're, li that you're literally lying in your bed at night looking at the darkness thinking, what's going to happen to my family? I'm talking to grandmas and granddads right now and you're, 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 you're literally hoping you don't die because you can't, you can't even bear what's going to be left and you're the only contact with your family. God sent me into your life today to tell you that God has a plan. God's working on something. 